Tonight's top European Union stories from the Unit UK include Danish Prime Minister says country should join the euro. Booming app sector gives hope for jobless youth, EU says. UK faces a £300 million fine from the European Union for failing to meet air pollution targets by the 2010 deadline. Hundreds of foreign millionaires apply for Maltese passports. Plus, von Rompuy expresses doubt over post-poll EU membership. It's Tuesday, March the 4th. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. First up, the hot story from our website, theunituk.com. Danish Prime Minister says country should join the euro. Denmark should eventually become part of the eurozone, as it would benefit the small Scandinavian country, Danish Prime Minister Heel Thorning Schmidt has said in an interview. Though the Danish Prime Minister currently has no plans of calling for a referendum of Denmark's euro opt-out, Thorning Schmidt personally believes the country should still join eventually. Interestingly, the Danes weren't saying that back in January when the EU put the kibosh on Danish pastries by regulating the amount of cinnamon being sprinkled on them. Search our website for cinnamon for a look back at that regulation. The booming app sector gives hope for jobless youth, European Union says. The European Commission expects the EU's app sector to employ 4.8 million people by 2018 and contribute 63 billion to the economy and hopefully have a positive impact on the pressing youth unemployment problem as many developers are from younger generations. In 2013, EU buyers and advertisers also spent 6.1 billion euros on apps, according to a new report by Gigome Research. As consumer spending and advertising is expected to grow, the report predicts a booming sector which could grow to 63 billion euros in annual revenue in five years. Well, is there no end to the foresight and economic vision of the kleptocrats in the European Parliament? I mean, just how many apps of virtual sweet stacking, social belly button fluff picking and guess the unusual item photographed at a very strange angle do you think the Android wielding iPhone holding sheeple of Europe will buy? UK faces £300 million fine from the European Union for failing to meet air pollution targets by the 2010 deadline. Britain is facing a £300 million fine from the European Union for failing to reduce air pollution. Strict targets to cut levels of nitrogen dioxide, which is mainly caused by traffic fumes, should have been met by January 2010. But officials said Britain had not presented any plan to tackle the problem in 16 areas, including London, Birmingham, Manchester, Leeds and Glasgow. The government now has two months to respond, and if it fails to present an acceptable plan, it could face legal action and punitive fines. The threat comes after the EU has already forced the government to announce plans to cut the speed limits on parts of the M1 and M3 to 60 miles per hour in a bid to reduce pollution. Of course, for those of us with concerns about increasing energy prices and want to know why the costs have increased so much in recent years, well, this is it. And it's also the reason why further coal-fired power stations will be forced to close in the UK, with no currently available energy resource to replace them. When it comes to the EU on this policy, all you can say is, you're not just wrong, you're stupid. Hundreds of foreign millionaires apply for Maltese passports. So, following up on this story that we reported on late last year, it looks like the Maltese Passport to Europe sales force have exceeded their sales targets. Hundreds of wealthy foreigners have applied for Maltese passports that give them the right to live in Britain, and even to claim benefits. The passports cost £500,000 each, and a former Formula One world champion, 
and a Chinese billionaire are thought to be among the 277 applicants that Maltese Foreign Minister George Vela said embassies across the world had received. The policy will allow the super-rich from countries like Russia and China to effectively buy the right to live and work anywhere in the EU. Mr Vela said in his reply to MPs that most of the applications were sent to missions in Dubai, Istanbul, Moscow, Paris and Rome. Van Rompuy expresses doubt over post-poll EU membership. Herman von Rompuy, the drab, damp rag dishwashing assistant to the dishwasher's mate, not just humorous, but when one considers all the wishy-washy rhetoric coming from the EU ministers, it sounds like a comment that's right on point. <laughs> the President of the European Council, Herman van Rompuy, has repeated a warning that an independent Scotland would face difficulties negotiating entry to the EU. At a meeting in Brussels, he backed the views of the European Commission President, José Manuel Barroso, who last week said an independent Scotland would face a difficult, if not impossible, task to win support from all 28 EU member states. Deputy First Minister Nicola Sturgeon has insisted an independent Scotland could not be forced to join the Euro's single currency and would be able to opt out of the Schengen free travel areas, allowing it instead to remain part of the UK and Ireland's alternative common travel zone. She said yesterday the warnings were preposterous and she added Scotland is already in the EU and has been for 40 years. Well, what can I say? How about another square sausage butty and grabbing a can of iron brew? Meanwhile, Herman, okay, are we and boil your heed? Today in our video library, we have a CCTV interview with Jim Rickards, global economic strategist and author of Global Currency Wars. In this interview, Jim talks about the weakening of the US dollar, the likelihood of a global currency collapse, and improvements in the strength and tangibility of the euro. Now, remember to visit our website, theunituk.com, for all the very latest news. You can find our page on Facebook by searching for The Unit UK, all one word. Join our community on Google+, Plus, where you can interact with us, voice your opinions and post comments about our stories, and even get involved in the shows. And for all the latest tweets as they happen, then follow us on Twitter, The E Unit. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for The Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon. <laughs>